Hi, my name is Ming Yao from Singularity Engineering. In this video, I'm going to model, set up a simulation for a bolt and wrench type of analysis. This uh, method can also be used for gears or anything that slides in order to, to apply load to different structures. Uh, it's obviously nonlinear contact analysis, and we're going to start by taking a look at the materials. Uh, I'm going to assume everything is made of structural steel for now. You can certainly change the material as needed, and we'll use our wrench model. Uh, this model will be a 2D analysis, so in ANSYS we, we can change it to from a 3D to a 2D analysis at the geometry level by making this analysis type change. 2D analysis allows us to run the simulation much faster and uh, it allows us to put a lot of elements in the contact area to get a nice resolution of the stress at the contact, Hertzian type of stress um, results. So here we're in ANSYS Workbench Mechanical, and uh, we're going to bring the geometry in. Okay, I model this bolt. So this is a 2D model. We have a bolt in, inside, and we have a wrench type of structure on the outside. Uh, a contact has already been identified between the two parts. Uh, because the gap is fairly small. I didn't make this exactly the same size, so there will be some slop in the turning. So initially, the two parts are not even in contact. So we're going to switch this to a frictional contact with a coefficient of friction of 0.5. And importantly, we want to stabilize the analysis. Because the two parts are not initially in contact, if I start twisting, they could uh, um, just kind of move away from each other. So having a little bit of... Uh, Stabilization allows us to overcome the issue with uh, initially no contact. We can. I'm going to get a somewhat refined mesh on on the edges here. So we'll put sizing on it and uh, switch to millimeters here. So 0.1 millimeter, right? A fairly refined mesh on our bolt and wrench model where they meet. Uh, the analysis type will be large deflection, and we want to turn on auto time stepping. So, I'm going to start with 10 steps. This is a standard linear, nonlinear analysis setup, and we give it lots of potential maximum steps so that if ANSYS has convergence difficulties, it can uh, reduce the, time, the loads and, and um, find a converged solution. So, we're going to support the center of the bolt. Then we're going to crank on this handle here. Uh, there's uh, different ways we can do this. We can put a force going upwards, but in this case, I'm actually going to apply a remote displacement. The remote, remote displacement will be centered around the bolt itself. So we're going to have this location as a center. It's going to grab the handle, and we're going to turn it by, let's say, 3 degrees. The center will not move. This further constrains the simulation. So that's pretty much all we have to do. Let's go ahead and run this analysis. It's a 2D analysis, so the mesh count is extremely low. We only have about 10,000 nodes here, so it should run pretty quickly. Typically, I like to look at the force convergence graphs. Okay, the simulation is completed. Let's take a look at the deformation. You can see the gap closing and the sliding happening between the two different parts. We can look at the stresses. This gives us an idea about the durability of the different parts. A little bit of penetration here, so we can re reduce that. But you can see the classic Hertzian contact patterns. And we can grab my fixed support um, can probe for the moment reaction at the fixed support. This test tells us that as we crank the, the um, 
as we crank the wrench, what the moment is. Uh, Newton's millimeter, let's switch to pounds of force. So, so pounds of force in inches. So if we try to turn this handle by three degrees, then we, we are exerting 664 pounds force inches on the part. And we can correlate that to the stress on this part as well. So a lot of other, other options for uh, improving the accuracy, further refining the mesh. We can switch to a different contact algorithm to minimize the amount of contact. But this type of analysis allows you to quickly run a contact simulation and understand the force, reaction, and stresses that's exerted by that motion. So that's a quick example of a nonlinear contact simulation. Thank you for watching. And please like us on YouTube and check us out at singularityeng.com. Thanks and have a good day.